in the last talk we were discussing right religion now following that cue we must in this context address the fundamental idea surrounding which religion or religions have been founded that idea is God the idea of God I'm saying the idea of God not God it's a rather serious talk this one is going to be not complicated in order to understand a certain issue you must be free from conclusions you must not see it either as complicated or simple you must see it as it is an idea a notion that we must understand in order to truly realize its fundamental roots and the ones that the roots that we are interested in in this talk are the roots of the idea of God. I wonder does humanity I wonder whether humanity realizes that its idea of God is not really something universal something ultimate its idea of God is as varied as diverse as all the qualities of humankind various cultures have various gods and those various gods have various distinct characteristics just like all humans possess distinct characteristics why hard as it may sound the gods or God or whatever you call it that humanity cultures throughout the world have constructed have created speculated, theorized, conceptualized, all of it was constructed in humanity's own image. God was created in the image of human. In fact, I wouldn't be wrong if I say God was created in the image of man although when I use the term man I do not use it to refer to human I refer to the male gender so if you really see throughout the histories throughout the history of world religion you will find out that most of the gods the characteristics that they possess are all basically fundamentally male characteristics other than Hinduism most of world religions see God as a kind of male 
figure. That's why in the Old Testament, first man is created and woman is created out of his rib. Because those scriptures, all scriptures, were man made. None of it create none of it was created from God, by God. So the very first fundamental fact that we need to be aware of is that when we talk about God outside the conventional notion outside the orthodox system of religion we have to take into consideration not one or one kind of God but but two kinds of God or two gods one is the God or is the bunch of gods that humanity has created Abraham Abrahamic God all the 330 million gods and goddesses of the Hindus Islamic God that is basically the Abrahamic God so all those gods every single one of them they fall into the category of man-made gods the gods that were created by man and yes man women had almost nothing to do with it men wrote the scriptures men distorted the fundamental idea of religion they constructed the organized structure of religion that was best suited for them women were just an aid to their existence to their dominance and the other kind of God that we need to consider is the actual God by which I mean the origin of the universe how the universe began in the first place so we're talking here about the origin of everything including ourselves now we know that biological life as it is evolved and it became more and more complex from a single cell organism to a multiple cell organism now we are now we see through that process of evolution various a diverse range of life forms on earth but it all started from one single cell where did that come from there are various hypotheses explaining how that one cell could have come into existence but the point is all of it is speculation beyond that point we have really no idea and I mean no idea we don't know we simply don't know so here the real idea of the real God would be something that would explain how everything began in the first place the universe life everything but as a species we are not advanced yet intellectually to answer this kind of fundamental questions there are scientists working on it relentlessly but the fact remains we don't have an answer and the point is superstitions fester where there is no answer ignorance is the fuel for superstition hence put an imaginary divine entity in that place and just fill in the gap makes things easy for people at least 
that gives them comfort. Now let's come to the come to the incidence of divine revelations, transcendental states where people apparently experienced God. Mm -hmm. Experienced God. This state is termed in various cultures differently. This state, this state is the closest we have to something remarkable. That if you really experience it, you would no longer see the world as it is. Now, don't make it mystical, I urge to you. It's not mystical. It's the basic, not basic because it's not, it doesn't occur usually. But it is a part of your mental realm. Any human being can experience the so-called transcendental state where prophets met God or angels or became one with the universe. These people include myself. Before I was a scientist, I was utterly, perhaps desperately curious about the question, what is God? Whether it is at all real. So I became a monk. I wandered around the villages of Bengal and then one day I met God that is that transcendental experience I had that experience except the point is that experience doesn't really change anything except for rewearing or perhaps reinforcing the mental elements that you already possess your goodness your kindness or your cruelty your bestiality anything and the point is you can never know what will happen after you've attained that state a good person may become bad a bad person may become good a good person may become a better version of himself or herself a bad person can become worse version of himself or herself so there is no accurate answer to the question what what kind of human being is going to come come out of that experience so you can never be sure but the point is that experience is all in your head whether you see angels or in case of Buddha many other Indian sages myself and others you become one with the universe literally one with the universe not theoretically you lose the ability to distinguish the self from the other from the self from the environment because the brain region involved in it gets extremely inactive the brain region that is involved in creating that distinction in creating your sense of self so that distinction between the self and the other is a neurological construction like all other mental elements and when that region turns off which means that that distinction vanishes and that's what happens when you attain the transcendental state either through meditation the most effective and healthy way or 
there are certain other stimulus certain other triggers that can make you experience a similar transcendence but most of them are hallucinatory and many of them could have a deteriorating impact on your brain the healthiest way to experience the so-called God or transcendence or nirvana or non-duality is through meditation if you are so desperate to experience it for example if you already possess a dominant perception of a certain kind of deity or god or goddess or angel any anything of that sort all you need to do is just pump yourself up with a few doses of some hallucinogenics and you would literally experience it is very likely that you would experience that God that God would appear to you and this kind of actual encounters with God often occur in what we call near-death experiences people who have a traumatic experience often wake up telling you that they have been to heaven or where they have met their diseased relatives or God or Jesus or blah 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 it goes on the list of entities that they meet in this state of trauma it's the brain's way to make you feel mentally comfortable while your body goes through that trauma it's the brain's way of self-preservation and it is all done through a chemical called DMT dimethyltryptamine which is released in your brain under utterly stressful conditions and the most the most stressful condition that a human can have is when that person faces death so during that event that chemical is released and the brain goes through goes to a DMT hyperspace a kind of hyper dimension because literally the soul pops out of the body the person experienced it in that way actually the soul pops out of the body and goes through goes to a an imaginary heaven so that perception is already created through sociological conditioning and all sorts of beliefs and thoughts so the mind has already the mind already has all the data about that heaven about that paradise so at that time when the DMT is released the mind just that information becomes a reality that heaven that paradise or even in some cases hell becomes a reality most cases paradise where they meet Jesus meet diseased relatives and many others and they come back and they say they have been to heaven now the beauty of this or perhaps a little bit irony is that this hyperspace this hallucinatory realm feels so damn real that it doesn't matter whether it is a layperson or a scientist so even whether that person is a neuroscientist or a, anything else, a professional, that kind of experience, when that person goes through that experience and after when that person comes out of it, he is neurologically almost incapable of distinguishing the reality from the hallucinations because that's the brain's job to trick you and to believe something that suits your needs and in this case the most the highest necessity of your biology is to survive is to heal from that trauma and for that the brain is going to the brain is going to do everything in its power so it creates a myth a fiction from the data that it already had acquired 
through a lifetime of sociological conditioning, acquiring data, uh, opinions, beliefs, delusions, illusions, perceptions, everything. DMT is the most profound hallucinogenic, one of the most profound hallucinogenics that we have. And consuming it, you can experience paradise on earth. But the fact remains, it's, an, it's a hallucinatory paradise, it doesn't exist. The same happens with another kind of trigger. Electromagnetic stimulation. That is, if uh, your brain is triggered with electromagnetic stimulus, then also you can have similar hallucinatory experiences. That is why when uh, there are geomagnetic disturbances, that is disturbance in the Earth's magnetic field, it can, it affects, it does affect the human brain, the functioning of the brain. That's why the most sensitive brains feel a little bit disoriented. In fact, there have been studies where we have found that people with severe psychiatric conditions, they experience an increase, a substantial increase in their symptoms during these events of geomagnetic disturbances. So these are the few stimuli that can make you experience gods, angels, demons, devils, Satan, your diseased relatives, everything. All based on your predominant notions and ideas, memories, so all of those gods that we have were created by the mind in this kind of either typically hallucinatory experiences or natural transcendental state that is oneness with the universe fact remains they are all made by the mind and as for the real God the actual origin of everything, I don't know, you don't know, no scientist knows. The human species, Homo sapiens, evolved around 200,000 years ago and it's only in a recent few centuries that we have advanced scientifically, which means intellectually. So it will take a long, long time until we actually become capable enough to find, to even try to find the answers to these kind of fundamental questions. The origin of the universe, the origin of life, before the one so organism that is. Until then, we have to admit, we have to accept that we don't know. Because if we don't, then our delusions of an imaginary God, of an imaginary entity, of an imaginary messiah, is only going to create more and more conflicts between ourselves. One human says, my God, my Messiah, my prophet is the right prophet and yours is false. You, you are possessed by Satan. This kind of delusions are only going to Make the world fill with blood, pages of countless scriptures, drenched in the blood of innocent people, people just as human as you and me. We have only one identity. We are all humans. And that human life, that's real. For no delusion, for no imagination, for no illusion, we, 
we can destroy that life. No human has the right to destroy the beauty of life just because of his or her imagination and delusion. The only reality is human life. The only reality is nature. Beyond that, we don't know and we have to accept that we don't know. Because if we don't have the basic guts to accept our shortcomings, our incapability, we will never ever grow up and we will only try to cover up our incapabilities with illusions and delusions and that will further create more and more conflicts and those conflicts will further bring down destruction on earth.